Hey guys, in today's video we are going to do a cleanup, upgrade, repaste and a fresh windows install on this uh, fairly old Lenovo Legion Y7, uh, Y700. Uh, it's a gaming laptop from 6 or 7 years ago, it's a 17 inch one and as you can see it's really dusty on the inside, it needs some general DLC but this is nothing to be afraid of. The screen needs to be cleaned, definitely. Uh, there are some bubbles right here, right here, which those can be fixed. But once we clean it up, they shouldn't be an issue. Uh, the customer wanted to have an SSD inside because it's currently with an, uh, with an HDD rather than SSD and it's quite slow. He also wanted an additional eight gigs of RAM. Currently the machine is at with one terabyte of HD HDD and eight gigs of DDR4. This is the parts that we'll be putting inside the machine. This A data SSD, 512 gigs. It has decent read and write speeds and should make this machine at least four or five times faster than it is. And then we have another stick of 8 gigs DDR4, which should fit perfectly and there should be no issues. The customer wanted all of, it, all of his information to remain. Um, so what we're doing is I'll pop out the HDD and simply put it into, into this 2.5 inch external case and he can use his hard drive as an external storage. Uh, without further ado, let's hop right in and let's start disassembling things to see what's inside. We have a few screws on uh, the outer case which we need to remove so we can pop up the back cover. This is a locker really fit on the inside, as you can see, a huge amount of this. These fans definitely have a, have a better base, they are all plugged up. And you can see the amount of this in general.
the thermal paste was never replaced. It seems like it turned into jello, but we're going to fix that. As of now, I'm going on my balcony so I can dust off everything. I don't want this inside my house. I don't want to breathe it. So be right back. So this is as clean as I was able to get it. I removed all thermal paste, all the dust is cleaned off. I had to use a brush and a compressed air can to remove everything. Basically, I had to use the entire can so I can blow all the dust from the uh, vents, from the cooling, uh, from the cooling pads, and from the entire uh, chassis. Because there were some dust on the hinges, there was dust on, in the ports, there was dust basically uh, under wh where the fans sit, and in general, it was a very dusty motherboard, so it had to be dusted off. Uh, with this step complete, we can apply new thermal paste, both to the CPU and the GPU, and reapply the heatsink. We're going to do that. For the purpose of this video, I'll be using the Core Masters Thermal Paste. Uh, it's not the best out there, but this is what I currently have at hand. I usually tend to use Arctic MX4 or MX5, but there was, uh, there was none that stuck at my near uh, PC shop. We'll be going with the Core Master, and if there are any issues, we can replace that in a month or two. It's not going to cause any heating problems for the next few months. Uh, let's do that. You don't need much. You need just the uh, pea size. And that's it. There are people that like to spread the thermal paste across the entire CPU and GPU, but I like to leave gravity do its own thing and just uh, place the heat sink on top. This way we ensure that there will be no air bubbles in, uh, in there and there's going to be a good contact between uh, the CPU, thermal paste, heat sink. If you spread it and if you do a lazy job with spreading it, you might introduce some air and there might be some air bubbles or pockets and this is going to cause heating problems. With this step complete, we can uh, reapply the heatsink. You make sure to match all the, all the holes and we tighten all the screws in a criss-cross pattern. So I start from this end, then this, and we don't screw them all the way in. We just do few turns at a time so they can, so all can bite. Okay, now everything is secured. We should be good on that front. Let's apply, let's place the heating, the heating vents again. Plug everything back in. Make sure that all the cables fit well. Use my splitter to apply a bit more pressure on the sides. We don't want to break them. And this should be it for now. Now, let's go ahead and do the upgrades. We have, as you can see, one slot occupied. This should be the same ABX of DDR4. And, yep. We apply that. Place the additional BIM slot. This should be all for our memory. Unscrew the hard drive. This is the old one, WD, one terabyte. We've lost the screw somewhere. No, oh, okay, there it is. Let me remove those because I don't want to lose them. 
Now we need to unscrew, unscrew the sides so it can pop up that HDD. Unbox our new hard drive. There we go. Make sure that we do the right direction first. It should be this way. Yep. If you're not sure, always test first. We put it this way. We apply this foam packaging or whatever this is. I'm keeping it as original as possible. We plug the battery back in, and this should be it for this repair, guys. We put the back cover on. We ensure that all the clips click. We don't want anything to fall off. We don't want to break it either. Let's like a glove. Now we apply the 20 something screws. The four long ones go right here in the middle and right here at the top. And we are done. That's it. All 20 screws are in its place. And we should be good to go. I'm not going to bore you guys with the installation of Windows. I'll get you right after that so we can see that all the upgrades are visible. We see the 15 gigs of RAM, we see the SSD, and make sure that everything is working like a charm. Be right back. And there it is. Running Windows 11 without any issues, recognizing all the memory slots. We have 16 gigs. Two out of four slots are occupied. We can add additional two memory dims, but this is not needed for now. And there is the disk A data SSD which we installed. Thank you for watching guys and see you in the next one.